Uh, I'm joined now by Olivia Rutley, our political correspondent, uh, and I think hopefully at some point soon we might be able to remind ourselves of that moment where Keir Starmer was glitter-bombed on stage. What do you make of that? Well, I was in the hall for the glitter bombing moment, right. and it has to be said, Keir Starmer dealt with it very, very well indeed. As you said, I mean, that's a serious, serious security concern. And actually, I've noticed, and I've heard a lot of other people saying that at Labour conference this week, security has been a lot lighter than at Conservative conference last week. And apparently, that's simply because of funding issues, and the, the government of the day is funded much better mm. than the opposition party of the day. Lots of people now saying that needs to change. Keir Starmer brushed the glitter off his shoulders, rolled up his sleeves, as we've heard it, as we've seen him do many times before and got on with it. Has to be said, I would say that is the best constructed and delivered speech that Keir Starmer has ever made and it went down very, very well in the hall, just like with Rachel Reeves the other day. We saw plenty of standing ovations, there was a lot of energy in the room. As for the substance of the speech, I mean, there wasn't a huge amount of, of new information there. He was covering quite a lot of old ground and the message was very, very much what we have seen from Keir Starmer and from the whole of the Labour front bench for weeks and weeks now. It's not really ideological. It's about clearing up the mess that the Tories have created. As Rachel Reeves kept saying in her speech yeah. the other day, how have your family benefited from 13 years of Conservative power? That was a theme that Keir Starmer touched on again and again. Something which will probably play very, very well with particularly a lot of young people up and down the country is the house building angle. It's Keir Starmer making clear he doesn't want to tarmac over the green belt, but essentially he would allow a lot more planning, something yes. which the Conservatives have ignored. Another example of Starmer stealing the Tories' clothing, if you like. No, indeed. Look, let's just remind ourselves now of, we'll have a few clips of some of the actual substance, but naturally I'm going to start with a clip of the glitter bombing. So um, I think we can show you what happened now. This was right at the start of the speech. Yeah, there you go. Uh, covered with glitter. And then that individual was saying, you know, politics is broken. We need a people's house. We need a people's house. Um, not you know, entirely sure exactly uh, what that was all about. Um, apparently someone has found this guy on Twitter and I believe he has 16 whole followers. <laughs> so he's making waves, that guy. What I did quite like, Olivia, is that in years to come, in decades to come, with no context whatsoever, people are going to look <laughs> at a speech by the Labour leader, maybe the new Prime Minister, and go, why was he covered in glitter? <laughs> they could have got it out of his hair, bless him, couldn't they? But there we go. Look, I think he dealt with it quite well. I'm going to go to Christopher Home now, who's our political editor, who again was, was in the hall with Olivia. I think we can take Christopher now. Uh, Christopher, uh, Olivia's assessment... Oh, there we go. Still, still rapturous in there. Uh, Olivia's <laughs> assessment was that she thinks it was the, um, probably the best speech she's ever done. What do you make of it, the substance of it? Well, Patrick, I think there wasn't a lot there which a Tory leader wouldn't have said. The only difference is this way of raising money on non-doms, people who are based here but don't, don't pay tax here, uh, or pay tax voluntarily, pay a charge and the issue of uh, private schools and removing their VAT status. Otherwise, it was simply a speech to reassure Tory voters, give us a chance. He made a direct plea to Tory, Tory voters to, to, to chance their arm with Labour. And there's nothing really to scare them away from doing that because they're trying to offer this idea of, of he even said the word strong and stable government, which don't forget that was what Theresa May offered against the chaos of Labour under Jeremy Corbyn. They've literally reversed that position. So now Labour are offering strong and stable government against the chaos of the Tory party. Of course, there's risk there because that didn't end, didn't end so well for Theresa May, did it? But, but we counted here 53 applauses, a dozen or so standing ovations, big claps for supporting Israel, um, big, 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 big claps for, 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 for crack, cracking down on non-doms. Um, yeah, I think there's a real, a real feeling here of a party with momentum. But, of course, it'll be in the small print. We don't yet know how they're going to raise, for, raise money for lots of these policies, probably from borrowing but we'll find out soon enough. But the, there's a feeling of excitement here, Patrick, in the hall. Yeah, there, there, there may well be a feeling of excitement. There is a feeling of excitement. But have you not just got to the very core of it there, which is how are you actually going to pay for a lot of this stuff? I mean, yeah. is there any credibility? Is there an, a, a, an economic credibility gap, do you think, in the Labour Party? Well, there's not a credibility gap. I think Rachel Reeves does pass the credibility test not least when you have Mark Carney endorsing her in this hall just yesterday. But, yeah, you're absolutely right, Patrick, and we at GB News will keep asking how on earth are you going to pay for this, Keir Starmer? We don't know the answer to that. We know there was some money raised, as I say, from taking VAT off 
or adding it to private school bills, forgive me, and this non-DOM tax. But that's not really enough for the scale of work they want to do. He talked here about these new, um, these new garden cities to try and get Britain building again, um, new, new tech qualifications. I mean, it is very bold, but how they're going to pay for it is not, not going to get answered by, by, the, by the Labour Party, by Starmer himself. Yeah, indeed. And I'll just bring Olivia back into the fray now. Olivia Rutley, our, our political correspondent. Um, one of the big rounds of applause, really, was when he said, look, this party has changed now. For, you know, we've, we've got rid of anti-Semitism. We've got rid of a, lo a load of stuff. And, you know, and you, you saw there, that was one of the kind of standing ovations that he got. I suppose there is a sense here that this is, this is a different Labour. It is absolutely remarkable. I mean, it can't be emphasised enough just how much the Labour Party does seem to have changed in the last four years. I was out and about interviewing people, delegates, yesterday, asking them if they stood with Israel. And all of them, I spoke to 10, all of them said yes, 100%. And of course, we've seen that echoed by first David Lammy and now Keir Starmer. If we had Jeremy Corbyn as the leader of, of the opposition, we would be seeing free Palestine flags in the oh, hall. Yeah. We might be seeing something similar to the scenes that we saw uh, outside the Israeli embassy in London yesterday. Keir Starmer has taken a big, big pay to sort of clean up the Labour Party. There are plenty of Labour MPs from Corbyn's Day who are no longer MPs. There are lots of party members who've been kicked out of the party. Mm. And I think today, this conference, that's beginning to, to, to show fruit. Yeah, one of the big things that he made a point of was the NHS. And I thought this is definitely one to watch for a long time. I think a lot of people have thought, really, it would only be Labour who might be able to reform the NHS because if the Tories try and do anything drastic, they'll get absolutely hammered. And, and lo and behold, Keir Starmer stands up there and he says, I know people don't like this word, reform. And then he went on to say that working people are paying for their own health care. He said that an individual Tories knee ligament, he's a semi-professional footballer, uh, cuts a crowdfund £15,000 to basically choose between doing that or, or giving up his career. Uh, he said that, yeah, transform and reform the NHS, uh, and that is supposedly going to be funded by non-dogs. But, uh, again, I'm just not really sure that all adds up, does it? Well, I think, as you say, it's really interesting that Keir Starmer talks about reforming the NHS. Word Streeting, the Shadow Health Secretary, said something similar a few months ago. And at the time, it was considered very, very brave indeed. The Labour Party hasn't talked about NHS reform in a long, long time. And as, soon, as you say, as soon as the Tories bring it up, they're accused of privatising the NHS. It's just a sign of how far Labour have come that when Keir Starmer said that today, it was greeted with applause and wasn't really considered uh, controversial at all. As you say, whether funding it by getting rid of non-DOM status will work is very interesting. The Labour Party seems to think the whole NHS reform can come from, from this non-DOM status. And if you look at their calculations, you can see how it works, but they don't seem to have allowed for the no. fact that plenty of non-DOMs would probably go back well, to... They'll leave, right? Exa exactly. exactly. Uh, and, and I'm just having a look at some of these numbers now. So they think it will raise £3.2 billion. Pounds. And this, as far as I can tell, comes from a study from the University of Warwick, which maybe they should be shouting a bit more about that this is a university study that they are basing everything on, but fair enough. Um, and according to, to this, there are f the 500 wealthiest non-DOMs, uh, each of them would have to pay additional taxes of £6.4 million each in order to generate that £3.2 billion. Um, so that's not necessarily going to happen, right? And I think it's important to note that, that that is not necessarily going to happen. But Olivia, thank you very, very much. Olivia